Hi there. In this video, we will try to construct the partial linear market model. We know about the markets in the economics and we know that there is uh, the demand force and there is supply and due to that we also have a price variable in it. So we will consider these variables in order to construct a model which is known as the partial linear market equilibrium model. We are starting with the conditional equation for equilibrium. This is the conditional equation for equilibrium where QD should be equal to QS. We can rewrite it in this way which expresses the excess demand which is equal to zero because there is no excess demand in the situation of equilibrium. The demand is equal to the supply. Now the e behavioral equation of the two would also be there. This is the behavioral equation of quantity demanded and this is the behavioral equation of the supply function. We know that A, B, C and D. These are all parameters and they are considered to be positive. And A is the intercept of demand function. C is the intercept of supply function. B is the intercept of demand function and D is the intercept of supply function. So these are the four parameters and their interpretation. Uh, these have some economic interpretations as well in addition to these mathematical uh, stipulations and ranges. Let us consider this diagram in which we have the demand diagram uh, as we already know that is a negatively sloped curve. And we have supply curve as well which is definitely positively sloped. But this is where it intersects the x-axis and this is where it has the intercept on y-axis. Another thing that we should notice here is that price is on the x-axis and quantity demanded and quantity supplied is on y-axis. Now this makes it uh, a proper dependent independent variable allocation because QD is a function of P and QS is also a function of P. However, in our usual practice in economics, we make the inverse demand function where we place price here and we place QD and QS on the x-axis. So usually we have the inverse demand function. Here we have a proper demand function where QD is expressed on y-axis and P is expressed on x-axis as per their rules as dependent and independent variables. This is the point of intersection. This is the equilibrium price. This is the equilibrium output. Now this is that price which is showing that there is no quantity supplied till we reach this level of price. So it is quite intuitive that a supplier is not going to supply until there is a minimum level of a price that satisfies his demand for a minimum price. So this is known as reservation price which shows that there is a lowest price at which a seller gets started to sell the good that he is selling. Before it or below it, the seller will not be willing to sell the good because that will be too low and at that level of price, the profit margin might not be there. There might be loss in this region. We don't have profit variable here, but it is reflecting that this is not the desirable region for the producer and definitely the profit is unlikely to be there. So this is the minimum price that a seller is willing to charge. And this is um, the process of uh, comparison of the inverse demand function and the demand function. And here we have the diagram which is representing a true demand function. Now we can also do this uh, in a mathematical way to find the solution values. And that is also very easy because this is the process of solving the simultaneous equations. Actually, these are the behavioral equations, the QD and QS. What we need to do is to solve them simultaneously because when we convert this QD and this QS into D, into Q, it becomes a couple of variables that is price and Q. And we have two equations as well. So this means that we have simultaneous equations. 
that is the number of unknowns is equal to the number of equations by comparing these we can get to the price which is known as the equilibrium price this will be the simple algebra and it is conducted to find out the value of price this is the value of price and here the parametric stipulation is that B and D should not sum to any negative value it should be positive or greater than 0 and it should also not be negative or equal to 0 because if it is negative the price will be negative and if it becomes 0 the price will be undefined and in economics only a positive price makes sense neither a zero neither a negative value nor a defi undefined value a zero price might be acceptable in extreme cases but definitely not infinity or a negative value of price now we have the equilibrium price the other variable the unknown is output so we can also find that out and we can do this simply by putting this p status in either of these equations here in place of the p variable so we have chosen the first equation which is the demand equation and here you can see in place of p we have substituted the equilibrium price we can solve this it is symbolic so we have to solve it symbolically this is the lcm you can pause the video and see this simple solution simplification will give rise to this term and there will be cancellation as well as you can see these are the two terms that get cancelled out and we are left with the equilibrium output so this is uh, requiring a certain stipulation that it should be positive because already we have put this stipulation that the sum of b and d is a positive value so this is already there but we have to be cautious about this because it is a uh, it has a minus sign between the two terms whereas there was no minus sign here so there was no possibility of having a minus sign or a zero in the numerator because both of them are already considered to be positive values in our previous topic that is here so now uh, we have to consider this value and definitely it's non-negativity is what we want so when we take the difference of the two that is these two terms the answer should be positive so that the answer of the output at equilibrium is also positive so it should not be equal to zero because if it is equal to zero definitely there will be no output it can be a situation uh, where definitely we are at an intercept which is x intercept in this case when price is on the x axis so in the normal situation there will be positive output and for that this parametric stipulation should be followed and this is another way of writing the same thing now in the set notation we can write these results these are the results this is the demand function this is the supply function p and q when q is equal to this p and q when q is equal to this so the demand function while declaring p and q as the two variables they are mentioned and the supply function declaring the same variables that are involved in the supply equation and the answer is the equilibrium set of values equilibrium price and equilibrium output which is an outcome of the intersection of the demand and supply functions so in this way the set notation can also be used to mention the equilibrium in the market so this was the solution for price and the equilibrium output and this was the development of this market equilibrium model and this is how we complete this construction of the partial linear market model along with its solution values. Thank you.